in this session i am going to discuss about a current affair topic which is call linkage policy and uh, this topic is really important and uh, you can expect question from this topic either for your gs1 or for your gs3 okay now let's see uh, about the call linkage policy and before directly going into the policy now let's uh, take a look at what why we need this call linkage policy okay now let's uh, discuss about some basic issues which is persisting in the the thermal power production okay or in the related with the coal sector so around or the importance of this coal is that you know around 55 percentage of the electricity is generated with the help of coal okay, even though we are giving more importance to the renewable energy resources we cannot undermine the importance of coal in you know producing electricity and there are few issues persisting in this sector one is like you know even though the coal is very important uh, for our thermal power plants like we, the, there is inadequate availability of domestic coal even though we are having the enough resources we are not you know mining it properly and we are not you know enabling them to reach the power plants okay so there is inadequate availability of domestic coal so that the power plants they will have to depend on the imported coal okay and with time the imported coal it is imported coal it is getting you know pricier and pricier so what happens is that you know more import import which is pricier and pricier is having i mean is taking place as well as you know the, there is inadequate availability of domestic coal so both of these things can be seen as a basic issues i mean related with this sector and one another major issue is you know majority of our power plants they are running at a low power load factor now the term power load factor means you know the the maximum energy generation divided by the total capacity of the power plant so in the sense if i'm saying like the power uh, the plant load factor is low it means that the the thermal power plant it is not operating at its full capacity or it is not utilizing its full capacity okay and why it is not able to utilize its full capacity because of the inavailability of the domestic coal okay so these are the basic issues persisting in the sector and this is why we need you know a policies like you know the coal linkage policy or like the shakti policy both having same name like shakti the scheme is i mean the abbreviation of the scheme is shakti and the full form is scheme for harnessing and allocating coal transparently in india like as of now like this coal allocation in india was bit you know very bureaucratic as well as it it was non transparent in nature okay so shakti actually you know aims to allocate the coal properly to the thermal power plants you know in an optimum manner so generally like what is shakti it means that the guidelines that are been designed by the central government in order to allocate the coal to the thermal power plants okay now let's see how the ndr policy works first of all there is this miners or you can say the coal producers so i mean from this coal producers the coal will be allocated to the each state government power distribution company that we call it as disco now each state government they will be needing or their requirement for coal will be different okay so the requirement of the state governments will be clubbed to together and that amount of coal will be allocated to this state government through the coal linkage policy i mean in the sense i mean allocated to the state government in the sense that means they are directly given to the giving it to the state discoms or any any of the you know, agencies which uh, the state governments are nominating so now let's stick with the state discoms so the miners from miners the coal will be allocated to the state discoms according to their requirement right now from this state discoms or distribution companies it will be given to the thermal power plants and the way in which the coal is allocated to the thermal power plants will be based on the efficiency and cost of power of that i mean that peculiar i mean that particular thermal power plant okay so allocated i mean coal allocated from the miners 
given to the state discoms and state discoms can uh, choose to distribute the coal to the thermal power plants based on the efficiency of that thermal power plant and the cost of production okay or cost of power now within the thermal power plant generally like there will be state or central power generator as well as new there will be independent power producers okay so like uh, you know if the, the if the state discoms they are, they are giving the uh, coal to the central or state power generator it will be through the allocation route and if the if the coal is allocated to the private player it will be through the auction route and this auction route and allocation route like they are creating a transparency in the in this sector okay so generally from miners are there allocated the coal is allocated to the state government by through them like uh, uh, they are allocated directly to the thermal power plants so what happens is that the, the state discoms they are distributing the or they are allocating the coal to the thermal power plant and they will be purchasing the electricity or the power generated from the power plant back to the state discom okay so they can so that they can distribute it uh, or they can transmit it to the various uh, needs okay so this is the overall way in which this scheme called linkage policy works now let's take a look at the benefits of this scheme benefits of shakti like you know i mean directly it is trying to you know revive the power sector either like i mean if a question is not directly coming related with the called linkage policy you can use the scheme in order to i mean you can use the scheme as a way of government initiative which is trying to you know revive the the stress tests in the power sector okay and the scheme tries to ensure fuel supplies in an organized and in a transparent manner and like another scheme i mean recently like the government is pursuing 100 percentage electrification or power for all and the success of this policy called linkage policy is necessary for the success of the electrification or power for all or such schemes okay and if we could you know effectively implement this this called linkage policy our coal resource that can be optimally utilized okay and transparency created by the auction route like this is more you know fr i mean private sector friendlier so all of these things can be seen as the benefits of the scheme and now as i said if you know if a question is coming i mean you can expect a question from gs3 or for your gs1 now if they are asking a question from gs1 it will be related with see either the distribution of the natural resource the coal or like you know the the factors responsible for the the location of primary secondary and tertiary industries and uh, the the thermal power plants or the coal power plants they are secondary industries so like they can ask related with the factors necessary for the location or responsible for the location of coal power plants okay now just briefly let's take a look at the the factors responsible for the location of coal power plants obviously the availability of coal okay it's a raw material and availability of coal is necessary for the location of the coal power plant then ash disposal feasibilities i mean the after after coal being burned the ashes will be produced and it can create air pollution and it it will be so hot so i mean it, i mean uh, there should be some water resources nearby so that you know these ash can be disposed properly and water availability one thing for disposing the ashes and second thing the water acts as the coolant in the power plants next the transport facility like the transporting the coal from the miners to the uh, power plant or you can say like the connectivity in the sense the transmission route okay so anyway then public problems i mean the the power plant it will be creating noise pollution and will be creating air pollution through the ashes so like if the power plants are within you know the communities or that can be that can create create public distress or also i mean also the coal resource they are basically in forest so that you know there will be uh, indigenous population there which can create public distress okay then nature of the land the coal power plant if they are created i mean if if we are constructing these power plants in the land or soil which are not stiff you know it can create destruction it's not a sustainable way of creating the the power plant 
so anywhere the location it should be suitable it should be hard enough to hold on the weight of the uh, the power plant so these are the factors necessary for the location of coal power plants now this policy like the coal linkage policy you can link this policy with other schemes also i mean especially uday or like you know, recently the the power tariff policy was you know amended all these things they are you know, related they are trying to achieve you know, the 100% electrification of power for all or reviving our or reforming our power sector so you should remember this scheme as a i mean this policy the coal linkage policy as a way or as a government initiative to trying to revive the power sector